This is Too Far Enterprises. First, I bring you Wendell Pierce as he shuts down a white reporter over black violence in America. He can explain it a lot better than I can. And let's give credit to Lewis Spot. I think racism has moved to the place in America where if you don't see context, that makes you a racist. Well, one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> As I look at this panel. But you have to realize that, yes, the involvement of violence in black folks uh, comes from that long history that the president was talking about. That um, you, you, We have to remember that we learned from some of the best. There's some white boys came over here that, uh, that did the first beheadings in Point Coupee, Louisiana, where I'm from. Slave insurrection, that was the way you dealt with it. Tuskegee syphilis incident. We're going to see how black men die if they have syphilis, but we pretend we treat them with penicillin, and we're just going to watch the pathology of how they die. Now, that wasn't back 200 years ago. That was 1930 to 1974. We were talking about giving these wonderful blankets to Native Americans infected with smallpox as they walked on that trail of tears just to see how they die and to eliminate their population so we can take all of that land. So the violence that is in America has come from a very learned position that was brought here by some Caucasian folks. All right? So now, we got to the NFL. When it comes to the NFL, you have black men who have taken advantage of this opportunity to go there. So for every one, two, or three that may have been in the news because of violence, there are another 2,000 that deport themselves as gentlemen, as husbands, as fathers, and uh, and as great professionals. So we must remember them also. Uh, okay. So, but, but, you know, and, and, but yes, people are responding to that. They, they see that image of that black man. You know, one of the uh, MacArthur Foundation fellows that just... One is a, a, a psychologist, uh, Jennifer uh, Eberhardt from Stanford, who deals with racial uh, uh, messaging and, and in, in inequalities that people is either learned or subconscious that when you see me in a certain situation, you think violence. If they see you in a certain situation, people don't see violence. So the image of the black man being violent has been perpetuated. For what about kid, kid spanking and kid beating? That seems like something. I mean, we all know every black comedian ever has done a Even Bill Cosby did a routine about the beating start tonight. Well, the mythology of the, the black family and the spanking and, you know, I brought you into this world, I can take you out. We all carry that. I got spanked by my father. But, you know, whatever side of the argument you fall on when it comes to corporal punishment, whether you believe in it or you believe in timeouts, you can abuse either. You know, I mean, you can put a kid in a room for three days with no water or food and call that a timeout, but that's abuse. So if you go across the line, if you cut, if you cross a line that goes into child abuse, it's child abuse no matter what. Corporal punishment, if you believe it or not, is ultimately people are trying to discipline their child and get them to change their behavior. But we have psychologists that also tell us that any sort of violence is going to infect or, you know, interject into that child's head you know, behavior issues that are going to deal with yeah, aggression exactly. and all of that. So it's not a black thing. White people beat their kids, too. Absolutely. I see them in the wall. Well, <laughs> okay. I'd like to read something from Black Labor, White Wealth, The Search for Power and Economic Justice. And this is from Mr. Claude, uh, Dr. Claude Anderson. And I'd like to start off with the greatest challenge to black America is to do what blacks have never been permitted to do in the past. Through centuries of slave insurrection, civil rights demonstrations, or and urban riots, blacks have never had a public policy or clearly identifiable goal. They have not developed a public policy of how they're going to deal with racism where they intend to go as a people and how best to get there. This public policy ought to be broadly disseminated to all blacks and interlinked with all levels of black communities across America. All segments, churches, school, businesses, and community organizations should be involved in designing strategies and supporting the public policy. Rather than reinventing the wheel, Blacks should use white society's model for establishing public policy because it was very successful. And in conclusion, black Americans has always been compassionate and caring people. They should continue to do so. But now is the time for them to put their own interests first if they have any chance of changing their negative living conditions. 
Black America must develop strategies and programs that serve their best interests and allow them to both develop and protect themselves within a society that historically committed harmful acts against them, especially when they started doing good, i.e. Tulsa, Oklahoma, and many more. Until black obsolescence has been reached, about 20 years ago, blacks had limited ability to organize because they lacked capital, leadership, and resources, and they were restrained by economic system that had a use for them. But now we question that use. Now that black labor is non-essential and expendable, blacks as a group are vulnerable and expendable. A nation plan for black empowerment should focus on black becoming politically and economically competitive by acquiring increased wealth and resource power. The greatest challenge to black America is to do what he has never done before. Though the centuries of slavery, Jim Crowism, and the civil rights movement, black, my, black power, period, blacks have never had a public policy or racial goals to effectively deal with racism. Instead of empowering plan, new generations of blacks have inherited the vestiges of a failed 1960s strategy. These major failings deserve highlighting. First, black leadership mistakenly believed by removing Jim Crow symbols that racism would effectively die, and that has not happened. Second, they thought integration would make them equal and give them control of resources and power. Third, they failed to construct long-term institutions with long-term goals that could transcend generational lines and produce a never-ending flow of competent, well-informed new talent. Young blacks have a public policy and a plan for direction. All segments of the community, churches, schools, businesses, and community organizations must be involved in formulating and implementing the plan. But the plan must be coordinated nationally by an institute uh, with a, an, an intellectual infrastructure. Modeling the methods used by whites, blacks must develop an accountability system to make sure that all blacks support the goals of this plan. Blacks have to be equally as determined and committed to black policy on black self-empowerment as a white society has been to public policy on the use of blacks. Blacks must be willing to apply social sanctions and other penalties against those who violate the public policy for blacks. And this is important. We have to stick up for ourselves. The Black Empowerment Plan must be based on a vision of vigorously competing in a changing world. The plan must go beyond the dream of equality and integration, which hangs before them like a carrot on a stick. And the reason why it hangs before them like a carrot on a stick is because we have been conditioned to believe that we are supposed to be right where we are, following another man's game plan for our community, with no say-so over how we are supposed to operate and we're supposed to move forward in this world. But normally, instead of us having the power in our communities, we have other people coming in our communities telling us what we need to do and what we should be happy with. I think that you are tired about uh, of, of hearing things like this. I think that we are smart enough to create our own Wall Streets and do the things that we've done in the past, but we have to start somewhere. Get rid of the cowardness and the fearlessness the fearful feelings that you have, and it's time to come full circle. This is too far enterprises. Thank you.